and all organisations create their rules to suit the time and the space and the people that are in that organisation. Our rules were created to suit the time and space that they were created. Times have changed, we've moved on. So the rules also need to change to better reflect where we are now and where we're heading into the future. The rules don't reflect the commitment of TEU to Te Tiriti Waitangi or incorporate a Māori voice or the voice of tangata whenua within them. They need to be changed to add that so we're better prepared to move forward. The rules of our organisation were set up at a time where the people who were in charge were largely white. And while they may not have intended to create any biases or any impacts on other people who weren't represented, uh, they may have done that. Um, and so the voices of those people who weren't represented haven't been considered within our rules. The other thing with the rules too is that of, they often are reinforced by a democracy. So when the majority is all of one gender, one ethnicity, one way of thinking, then they are the ones that get the major voice. Mm. So it doesn't reflect the rest, you know. So, yeah, they really do need to be changed. So they do reflect all of the membership of TU now and in the future. I think that if we are to integrate Te Tiriti into our roles, the first step is for Pākehā to learn and to understand Te Tiriti o Waitangi. In particular, understand that there are two versions of Te Tiriti o Waitangi and that the binding one is the one in Te Reo Māori. If you don't understand Te Reo Māori, you might not understand Te Tiriti or the differences that are there. If I'm to suggest to any Pākehā members or anyone who might be listening to this who is Pākehā and confused about this, to learn one thing about Te Tiriti o Waitangi is to learn the difference between Kawanatanga, which is administrative governance, so pretty much just looking after things, compared to Tenoranga Tiratanga, which is ultimate sovereignty over the land. So it's to learn things like land was never ceded, um, sovereignty was never ceded within Aotearoa, and the amount of money that has gone through the Waitangi Tribunal is a drop in the ocean. It's n and those are only for absolute clear breaches of contract, clear breaches of te tiriti, and we need to let go as Pākehā of a belief that that is a significant amount of money for a start, because it's not. It's seriously like maybe a percent of what has been taken. And to start to understand and learn those things and to rewrite our understandings, because we hear a lot of stories about Māori and about uh, Māori activism in Te Ao Pākehā that just is not accurate. So it's learning about things like the Foreshore and Seabed Act. It's about going out and seeking training on Te Tiriti o Waitangi. It's about learning Te Reo Māori. It's about learning how to pronounce Te Reo Māori properly. If you can't pronounce it properly, it's about making an effort to pronounce it properly, making an effort to include it in our communications. So really, I mean, that's quite a, a large, bulky amount of tasks that I've just given Pākehā members, but I think we need to step up and do this. Mm -hmm. If we are to have a Te led led union, then we need to do it. As a union, we also have Te Koeki Tiriti, which is our four whainga, which guide us, um, and we have the work that was done with our review by Dr Moana Jackson. And when he did that review, he looked at who we were as a union and where and how we could grow into being a better union. We've got this work that has been done to guide us, not only Māori, but Pākehā, all of us, towards the rules review and then creating a better space for the union to represent the people in the tertiary education sector. I think that the rules of an organisation dictate the organisation's culture because policies and procedures and behaviours grow from those rules. So if there's a particular rule that is favouring a certain group of people, then the difference between those people 
becomes bigger. Um, mm. It's almost like creating a bit of a gulf between people. If the rules are created, then from the rules we build the policies, then from the policies we build the patterns of behaviour of how we do things, then that's um, going to lead to quite a massive culture shift within an organisation. Um, if we look at the other way with the new rules, uh, if those new rules are directed mainly at people who haven't been represented before, people who deserve their voices to be amplified, people uh, such as disabled people, women, um, Māori and Pacifica and other people who are not treated equitably within even our union, uh, then we need to change those rules so that everything else that flows from there is corrected. I see the rules too at the moment being quite a hierarchy that, uh, as you say, perpetuates that division between people rather than being used to actually bring people together to work together in union. Um, it's those at the top, you know, there's one, all these different layers and levels and um, if you happen to be at the bottom, as you said, um, disabled or marginalised in any way, shape or form to the dominant culture, then your voice isn't heard. So then the rules aren't actually fit for purpose. My message to members who are maybe uncomfortable about uh, this move to a tiriti led rules and structure of our organisation is that if your pākehā and uncomfortable about this. It's important to really have a think about why that is. Because many of us are raised to think even subconsciously that there is a group of people who are better and more equipped than others to do things. And a lot of us have this built into the way that we think. None of us want to think that we're racist. We need to also realise that we live in a society that is racist and that to actively change that means actively choosing anti-racism. This is an anti-racism move. If you're uncomfortable about something that is about removing barriers for people who are constantly put up against barriers, why is that? It's something that we really need to consider. Uh, within ourselves. I'm happy to talk to anybody privately to work through any of this stuff. Decolonisation is hard. Pākehā need to talk to other Pākehā to help other Pākehā understand. So we need this change. If you're uncomfortable, there's a really nasty reason why you might be feeling uncomfortable. I'd also like, that was amazing, follow on from that, in that it's not the job or the role of Māori to make Pākehā feel more comfortable. Uh, we've tried often, uh, what do I need to do? We get asked all the time by Pākehā, but it's not our job as Māori to fix Pākehā society, systems or people. Um, so I really like and support what you said about it. it has to first come from Pākehā, for Pākehā. <laughs>